What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be reviewing a keyboard that I've just had tons of requests to check out lately. We're going to review the new SteelSeries Apex Pro. Introduces new features as well as brand new switches to the SteelSeries lineup. This was shown off last month at Computex and had people very interested very quickly. The main interest coming from the integrated OLED screen and their new OmniPoint analog switches. Not too many keyboards have analog capabilities and technology, so when one comes out, always fun to take a look at it. We'll run through all that stuff and talk about my experience in this review in case you're thinking of picking up the new Apex Pro. So first up, checking it out and getting it unboxed. Physically, it doesn't look, you know, too out of the ordinary. It's your standard layout. You got RGB backlighting, as you'd expect. We also have a detachable wrist rest, which is included. It's a very soft rubber-like texture. Doesn't have any sort of cushioning or anything like that, but it is a soft material. The keyboard itself has an aluminum alloy frame with plastic on the bottom, but it still feels very rigid with practically zero flex or bend to the keyboard. In terms of those features, we have the new additions of the OLED screen and the multimedia wheel next to it. Pressing that illuminated menu button below gives you access to the menu here where you can go in and adjust things like the RGB lighting on the board, from picking through the effects to static colors, as well as even picking some preset or custom ones you can have saved. You can navigate through to the macros, scroll through them here. You can go through the key actuation, which we'll discuss in a minute, and all your profiles. Holding the wheel in for two seconds is how you actually enter a menu, and the menu button lets you back out, and it also acts as a multimedia control. So obviously with the wheel you can adjust the volume and stuff, but pressing that menu button will pause the music, two presses will skip a track, and three presses will go backwards. Still, Siri said they're going to be adding more functionality with the OLED screen coming down the line, but you can also use it to import graphics and GIFs, letting you add a little bit more personalization to your board. On the back side to the left of the keyboard, you have a USB pass-through for plugging in stuff like peripherals, flash drives, all that stuff. And when it is powered on, it's going to illuminate white. Since the keyboard terminates in the two USBs, you're going to have to have both plugged into your PC to power this additional pass-through, but I'm sure you know that by now. Then on the bottom of the board, you have two flip out feet and three cable routing channels to route the cable out the center, left or right side, which just makes it easier and more tidy on your desktop so you can route that cable to the side that's closest to your PC. Now the big selling point to these keyboards is the new OmniPoint switches where you can customize the key actuation point. This is all done through magnets and also the software, and each key can be controlled individually. These are a linear switch and are very smooth, and they're adjustable from 0.4 millimeters to actuate. And in comparison, uh, standard switches actuate at 2 millimeters, and Cherry Speed switches actuate at 1.2 millimeters. So the 0.4 millimeter distance here at the highest setting does make this the fastest switch on the market. It ranges then to 3.6 millimeters if you're used to bottoming out your key, or if you just prefer that longer travel distance. And since each of the OmniPoint keys can be changed individually, your wads can actuate at, you know, 0.4 for walking around in game. You can have everything else at a different, you know, setting or just keep them normal. But only the main 60 keys here have these OmniPoint switches. Everything else is a Steel Series red switch, so just keep that in mind. Just for comparison, a month or so ago, I checked out the Cooler Master MK850 keyboard, which had similar, you know, analog technology. That keyboard was limited to just eight of those switches, while this one here has 60. So a little bit of comparison for you. Now, if you're not used to this, it might take you some time to get used to that, you know, 0.4 millimeter travel distance to actuate the key. If you've been using like reds or blues, something like that for a while. Uh, but for me, I have been using the Cherry Speed switches for a little over two years now. So the adjustment period was definitely a lot, you know, easier and quicker because I was more used to that. But if you're someone new to a higher actuation point, it might take you some time. Now, is this going to give you a competitive advantage in game, you know, not necessarily because you have to factor in input lag, your internet, um, you know, online game servers and stuff like that. But once you start, you know, using this and you get used to that higher actuation point, you can definitely feel that you are moving and stuff in game quicker because it is actuating faster. And to help give you a visual of the switch actuation, when you scroll through the menu on the keyboard to the actuation tab, you can actually use the wheel to adjust the settings from one to 10 on the board itself, with one being the highest actuation point and 10 being the lowest point. Then when you press on one of the OmniPoint keys, it'll show you then real time the pressure you're applying to that key, and that arrow under the bar just shows you where it does actuate. This can obviously be controlled through the software as well. You could pick certain keys, group them together, whatever. It gives you that option in here to control control the actuation point 
Although it's kind of bland here, without a real proper job of explaining to the average consumer, you know, what they're actually adjusting. I feel like having some sort of 3D switch render to show you where you're, you know, actuating uh, would definitely make more sense in this case. Or, you know, even showing the millimeter distance as opposed to just a 1 to 10 meter rating, I think would just make a lot more sense here to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. So until they change or modify the software, just know that 1 is the highest point to actuate and 10 is the lowest point to actuate. And to also give you an idea, um, when it is at 1 for the 0.4 millimeter distance, if you just set your fingers on the keys and wiggle it just like this, it is actually um, actuating the key. Now, if you're asking, you know, like why, what is this even for? Well, first off, it gives you the flexibility to completely change up your keyboard from having, you know, certain keys be just for gaming. You can switch it up and have them bottom out for typing. It gives you that flexibility, which is really cool. All in one board without having to buy different switches for different boards and stuff like that. But also in gaming, say you commonly accidentally mispress a key. So instead of knifing someone, you toss a grenade. Well, now you can have that G key bottom out at 3.6 millimeters. You can still press it, but not accidentally toss a grenade. In the end, it's all about that flexibility, which you don't have with a standard keyboard. If you want to hear those Omni Point switches, I'll do a sound test now so you could hear them. Then next, diving into the Seal Series Engine software for customizing everything under the key bindings tab is where you can go in and change what each key does, create macros, set your different profiles and configurations for different games and stuff. We'll skip that actuation tab since I showed that off to you just a minute ago. Illumination is the RGB lighting effects, and at this point, you've seen all the RGB effects by now. It's 2019, so I'm not going to waste too much time on the actual RGB effects. Uh, but yes, you can change up the base effects of the keyboards from the seven preset ones. There's also the seven static colors to pick from, as well as now picking a reactive effect from when you press a key. This makes it so you can have like a secondary effect going on. Uh, but oddly enough, you can't actually go in and make your own lighting layout, like picking certain keys for certain colors and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know why that's not an option in 2019, because I feel like that's one of the most basic things that practically every RGB keyboard has out there. But they do note on the bottom here that they are adding more effects in the next update. So I'd assume some more basic stuff like that, as well as some RGB effects to complement the Omni Point switches are gonna be implemented again. And then is the OLED and settings tab for changing up that display. And here's we can go in and pick from the images or GIFs you have saved to your PC. And you can also use that as a canvas to draw something extremely meaningful. So wrapping it up with a summary of the pros and cons, yes, the Omni Point switches are very cool. They are a very linear switch, so they're just extremely, extremely smooth. Um, I'll, I could even go out on a limb and say that they are probably the smoothest feeling switch I've ever tried, and that's, that's saying a lot. They just feel very buttery smooth. And again, having that whole flexibility to change your actuation distance with one key is cool for those out there who could utilize something like that. And also the OLED screen is definitely cool to have like a secondary kind of metering things for certain games, integrations, but stuff like that. They're integrating stuff with like Spotify, Discord, uh, but a lot of that stuff they said is gonna come later on down the line, which is kind of a bummer. Wish they had that when, you know, the keyboard was released. And as for some cons, um, one thing I wish they would have done is had the arrow keys as Omni Point switches as well. Like I said before, just the main 60 or Omni Point, everything else being their SteelSeries Red Switch. But it's actually pretty common for lefties to use the arrow keys as their WASD. It's more common than you might think, so I feel like it's kind of a missed opportunity there. Just having four more switches probably wouldn't have hurt them that much in terms of production. It just would have made more sense to have these included. And then again, I want to stress that they need to do a better job inside the software. Again, explaining to the average consumer what they're adjusting when it comes to the actuation point. Because just you know, a meter of one to 10 doesn't do a good job. Having that actual millimeter distance, you know, displayed, whether it is in a render or just, you know, showing them the switch and the distance they're actually pressing would make a lot more sense to people who don't know what the hell they're doing. So we'd like to see that 
and it is a $200 keyboard. And like I kind of compared it to the MK850 from Cooler Master before, that was also $200 and was just limited to those eight keys. Uh, but here you have the 60. So in terms of that sort of you know price point out there, uh, it is the better option, I would say, as opposed to the Cooler Master one. But $200 is still a lot of money. So again, if Omni Point switches are something you absolutely need and want, not a bad keyboard, but it's also not without its flaws as well. So factor in your budget, how your wallet's feeling, you can decide from there. But all in all, it's, it's a solid keyboard and uh, very linear switches. Keep that in mind. Buttery, buttery smooth, uh, but it's pricey. So hope you guys enjoyed my review of the SteelSeries Apex Pro. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.